believe it. I can't believe it. After so long, after so long and so many tries, I've finally made fire. It's beautiful. Oh, look at it flutter. It flows and flows. Oh, it's, oh, you did it. You did it, you son of a gun. You, oh, who's the greatest wizard? Who's the greatest wizard? I am Wizard Wiz. Hey, what's up? I'm Adrian from ProductionCrate.com. I am here today with Chris Kelly from ProductionCrate.com. He's here, he's just keeping a safe distance. Actually, you know what? Hey, Chris. Uh, say hi. Hey, hey. What's up, dude? Hey. <laughs> Good to have you back. Yeah, man. Good to be back. Cool. So today, he and I are going to teach you how to make some heat distortion in After Effects. But well, why, you may be wondering. It's a relatively simple effect why? and... Good question. <laughs> <laughs> it's a relatively simple... Did the fact that I just spit directly at the camera and almost hit it show up on camera? It might have, yeah. It just shot out. <laughs> but why, you may be asking. It's a relatively simple effect. And there's a lot of plugins that already do it. Well, I've got problems with those plugins. First of all, my big problem is none of them can be tracked. You, you can't track them into the footage, none of them. And you especially can't track them in 3D. The way that we're gonna show you today can be tracked and will also work with 3D camera tracking. So it's way better. It's not even hard, it's gonna be easy. And sometimes even when you try and mask off an area where you want the distortion rather than just have it over your entire comp, you're gonna get like ghosting around the edges. It doesn't happen all the time, but it happens uh, any is too much, really. So my method doesn't have that either. Hey, Chris, did you notice on the last video, a lot of people were commenting they really like your longer hair, dude. Yeah. What do you say we give the people what they want? The thing that's gonna drive this effect is a displacement map. So right now we need to make the best displacement map we possibly can. Yeah, I'm fired up. <laughs> Let's make a new solid, it can be any color. Hot pink, baby! Hot pink, sure. <laughs> You'll want to track this into your scene if you have any camera motion. If not, this is dope. We shot hours on a tripod, so we're not going to have any motion. Easy peasy. <laughs> <laughs> Apply the fractal noise. Wait! Apply the turbulent oh, noise. Oh, you're finally making it into 2015, <laughs> is it? That? That's right. Okay. <laughs> For the fractal type, you can really pick whatever you want. It doesn't really end up mattering that much. Dynamic is probably your favorite, so just go with that and set the scale to something that makes sense in your scene. Set a keyframe on the offset turbulence and go to the end of your timeline and move it up. Turning the Y value down into the negatives is gonna make it move up. I don't know why. Don't no, ask no me, way. just move on. Ideally, you'll have some fire in your scene already or some reason that we're seeing this heat distortion. So use that as a reference to get the speed up approximately right. If you don't have any fire and you're just making the heat distortion, just eyeball it, it's all good, it's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. You can animate the evolution to add a bit more life to this. You could keyframe it, but it's probably easier to do it with an expression. So alt click the stopwatch, and then in that field that opens up, type in time times two hundo. That's just the value we like, but if it's too much for you, just put in a lower number. Or if it's not enough, just crank it on up. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> You're crazy. Oh, I like that. It's not bad. Yeah, that's good. So now we need to draw a mask around where we want this displacement to occur. Again, if you have fire or heat source in your scene, use that to guide you. Let the fire be your guide. We're making ours a bit shorter than our actual fire, and this next step will show you why. Chris, show him why. All right, click the little triangle on the <laughs> corner of the pen tool and change it into the mask feather tool. This allows us to add some additional points to our mask and that's gonna allow us to better control the feathering. Now we can add two at the bottom edges here, one at the top, and we can pull the top one way up and make the mask super soft at the top, but less so at the bottom. We can pull those bottom ones out a bit to add some feathering down there too, or we can just turn up the mask feather. You can still use those controls even if you have the feather. Feathering points. At this point, you may notice the color of your solid creeping through on those edges. Hot pink, baby! Hot pink! This might cause problems, it might not, it kind of just depends, but let's go ahead and get rid of it by changing the blending mode of our noise from normal to none. 
Mm -mm. Let's pre-comp that and call the comp our displacement map. Now that it's in its own comp, we can add other stuff to it if we wanna. There's no rule that says we can only use noise for this, and this is part of what makes this technique so much more powerful than just using a plugin. Ooh, we can use a plugin. Plugins. And there's nothing like a tutorial full of shade on a hot day like this, you know what I'm saying? This is gonna look a lot more realistic if you add some real elements to it. You can drop in some smoke or fire clips that are similar to the fire in your scene if you have any. In our case, the fire that we're going with is extremely sparky and emberly, which is a new word you can start using. Mm -hmm. It's full of particles basically, and that's not gonna look good as its placement. So we're actually just not gonna do that. We gotta use something else. Instead, let's try one of these smoke plume accents. Some of them are loopable, which is gonna come in handy. To make it loop, just right click on it in the project panel, find interpret footage main and change the loops to a higher number. One billion should be enough. <laughs> if you need to loop more than one clip, it's gonna be way faster to use the free crates looper script instead, so just do that. We can drop that in and hit the putts switch, that is the preserve underlying transparency switch, so it stays within our mask. We can also give it a transfer mode so it interacts with the noise a bit more. We're gonna go with overlay, but you could pick a different one. It just depends on what clips you're using and the colors of them and the colors of your noise and all that. So just pick one, you know? But anyway, now we have a displacement map that is way more organic and dynamic and any other After Effects tutorials buzzwords you want to use to describe it than it would be otherwise if we had just used some flat noise. Back in our main comp, we'll poke the eye out of that displacement map recomp and add a new adjustment layer. On that, we'll add the displacement map effect. We can turn up the horizontal displacement a little, but we're mostly interested in the vertical for climbers, not crawlers. We'll either turn it way up or down depending on the overall colors of our displacement map. Whichever one looks more like it's displacing upwards, use that one. In our case, we want it to go negative. This is causing our edges to get all weird and stuff. So let's add a motion tile effect and move it so that it happens before the displacement and click mirror edges and then and turn up the output height. Boom, fixed. Next, we add a camera lens blur, select the displacement map as the layer source and turn it up a bit. Make sure to hit repeat edge pixel so we're not messing up those edges we just fixed. Man, I just fixed them. Yeah. Now at this point, we need to make a decision. We can either keep the camera lens blur where it is and it's fine, or we can move it up to happen before the displacement map. Now, do we want to blur our displacement or do we want to displace our blur? They both look cool. Well, there's no right answer here. Just pick the one that looks better to you. Choose wisely. At this point, you might feel like the blur kind of sucks and wish you had more control over it. That's okay. We can do that. Duplicate the displacement map comp in the project panel and rename the duplicate to blur map. Open it up. Open it up. Make Open an adjustment layer and apply a solid composite effect and color it black. So now we have a solid black background. Black round. A black round. <laughs> we can use the curves or level to adjust the contrast so you can really dial in where you want your blur to occur. Back in the main comp. Bring. Back in the main comp. Bring in the blur map and set the camera lens blur effect to reference that one instead. Now you can adjust it as much as you want to get your blur looking. Perfect. In our final, we went through this whole process twice so that we could have some distortion under our fire as well as atop it, under and atop. And now that we've got that looking perfect and awesome, let's tackle a more complicated example because I told you that we could do this in 3D. So let's do it in 3D. We're gonna use this footage of an abandoned building and it's gonna look really cool. Or should I say warm? Or should I say warm? Yeah, let us know who should say warm <laughs> in the comments below. First, we need to track the footage with the 3D camera tracker. Perfect. Yeah, it was easy. Let's head over to footagegrade.com and grab a whole bunch of burning out fire <laughs> effects and place it into the scene. 
instead of using the target tool thingy thing to make 3D planes, we're just gonna be selecting individual points and making reference nulls from those. Then on those fire clips, we make them 3D and just- Make them 3D. Make them 3D and just move the anchor point to the bottom, hold down shift as we parent them to the nulls. It's actually a good idea because holding down shift while you parent something makes the child layer inherit all the transform values of the parent layer. Basically, what this means is the fire clips are gonna jump to the correct position. That way you don't have to copy and paste a whole bunch of stupid numbers. Then we can delete the nulls because we don't need them anymore. And what are we gonna do with a hundred nulls? Train them. <laughs> Train them to fight for us. <laughs> For this example, it's kind of important that the layers in the layer stack match the order of the layers in 3D space. So the fire clip that is closest to the camera is going to have to be the top clip in the layer stack. This is pretty easy if you just start from the front and work your way backwards. Just make sure you stay organized as you go because trying to reorganize these after the fact is gonna be a huge pain in the rear end. Don't act like you don't know what end we're talking about. <laughs> right here, we're gonna pull what's called a pro cooking show move and we're gonna show you our pre-prepared comp in which we have already made one of those very simple displacement maps to use for our heat displacement, just like we did before. We also have this other one with a straight edge in the center. And the reasoning behind that is uh, if it has a straight edge, we can butt it up against a wall and that way it won't look like our heat distortion is crossing through the wall because that'll make no sense. Nope. And we also have another version uh, that's just the opposite. So we can put that in the other corner. So back in the main comp, we can grab one of those and bring it in and move the anchor point to a better spot at the bottom and we're gonna start adding these to our scene just like the fire clips it's important that we keep these organized inside our layer stack we don't necessarily need one associated with every single one of our fire clips so Ooh, that'd just, be a lot that'd be crazy right am i crazy all we're gonna do is skip down in our layer stack something like five and we'll make that into a 3d layer and hold down shift and parent it to the fire clip that's directly above it and then we don't have to keep it in the same location we can move it over we can scale it just try not to move it in z space too much because that's wrong. Let's make another one. Why not go with one of the corners this time? Mm -hmm. It's the same process, but we just move it over so it's next to a wall because that's the whole point. And now we can speed through the rest of these super, super fast. Oh my gosh, look at us go. It's my fast forward sound effect. <laughs> Dr. Slow would be so proud of us. He would. Very sentimental man. <laughs> that's true. Now that we have all of those noise comps tracked in, we're going to want to scroll all the way to the bottom and hit Control C to copy our camera. And we're going to scroll up to our first tracked in heat map and we're going to paste our camera right next to it. Then select the layer and the camera and hit Control Shift C to pre comp them together. Probably give it a descriptive name as well. That sounds smart. Now that it's been pre comped, you can see that it is no longer a 3D layer. However, it still has the same 3D motion. That's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and that's because we included a copy of the camera in the pre-comp, remember? We just did it. So it's moving as if it were a 3D layer, but is not a 3D layer. And that's why it was so important to keep everything organized. Oh. Since we have it in the right spot in the layer stack, it's still gonna show up in between the correct layers and interact with the other layers correctly as if it was a 3D layer. If these layers were in the wrong order, it wouldn't work and it would render in the wrong order and it would look ridiculous and wrong. Like wearing socks with Crocs. Hey, don't hate. So now we need to go through each one of our heat map clips and we're gonna paste a camera next to it. Highlight the clip and the camera, Control Shift C to pre-comp it and just do that a bunch of times. Look at this go. Zappo. <laughs> Those are some fast sound effects, dude. Thank you. We ended up with 12 different displacement maps, a baker's dozen minus one, which is kind of a lot. This composition is starting to get real crazy. Who are you calling crazy? So let's just solo our top heat map and our footage. So like we said before, this heat map is still moving as if it were in 3D space and interacting with the other layers correctly. 
So let's add a new adjustment layer directly below it. And let's poke out the eye of that heat map because we don't need to see it ever again. That's right. From here on out, this is gonna be the same process as before. So let's add our displacement map effect. Select that first heat map as our displacement source and turn up the vertical displacement. Try not to go too crazy because if you <laughs> remember, this time we have 12 displacement maps as opposed to the one or two we had previously previously, and those are going to add up real fast. Count them, Baker's dozen. Minus one. Wish there's a better way to say that. <laughs> <laughs> and now we have a little bit of heat displacement, but it looks like it's tracked to the camera and correctly in 3D space because it sort of is. Yeah. Sort yeah. of. Yeah, it's yeah, a yeah. 2D effect yeah, though. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's why this is neat. You know, it's a 2D effect, but it looks 3D. Now we just want to do all the same stuff as before. We add the motion tile to fix the edges. We'll add our camera lens blur, and that is looking pretty awesome at this point we'll rename the adjustment layer heat displacement one and we can duplicate it and now the duplicate is going to automatically be named heat displacement two which is exactly what we want and we just need to move that down in the layer stack to be next to the second heat map and we'll just poke out the eye of that as well we don't need to see it i don't want to see it and now in the second adjustment layer we'll just change the layer that's being referenced in both the displacement and blur effects from heat map one to the new and improved heat map two and now we have two instances of the heat distortion that both appear to be tracked perfectly into the footage because like i said they kind of are so that's super neat but now we just need to keep on duplicating this over and over and over and making sure that there's one for each heat map Woo! look at us <laughs> we're going so fast uh, and eventually we're going to end up with exactly what we want and that's an entire room full of 3d heat distortion and that's awesome because all of this distortion is going to interact properly with our 3d layers even though the displacement map and the camera lens blur are both 2d effects and you can't do that with any heat distortion plugins that are on the market currently so now we just need to unsolo because that movie was <laughs> It didn't really work for me. All of our <laughs> other layers and everything is working perfectly. We'll add some finishing touches like some color correction and maybe some smoke and embers. And we can find all that stuff on footage crate. And that's it. That's the end. I mean, oh the gosh. movie was, the train scene <laughs> fight was pretty cool. But yeah, uh, I mean, I don't see a sequel happening. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope you learned a lot or at least learned some. You know, on footage crate, we've been adding a lot of fire and explosion related stuff lately. So there's new explosion explosions, which are awesome. Honestly, some of the best stock footage explosions I've ever seen. We've got new fire as well, including loopable fire that you could use in conjunction with this. We've got sparks, we've got smoke, as I mentioned earlier. So make sure you go check that out. Also, if you didn't already know, we just recently launched a new channel, which we've got some big plans for. So if you like us and you want to see more of us, go subscribe to that channel. It's called The Craters. We'll link it in the description below. And that's it. I've been Adrian Jensen from Rextrade.com. Make it awesome. Bye. Pretty hard. <laughs>